Screens on all-in-one liquid coolers have become one of the new fashion trends in recent times. We've already examined some models from big cooling vendors such as Corset and Thermaltake, and this time it's MSI's turn on our test system. The MSI Meg Core Liquid S360 is a £250 Acetec 7th Gen 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler with a 2.4 inch IPS display and an integrated 60mm water block fan. Let's take a closer look. Once we open the box and remove the generic Acetec installation hardware, we see the cooler's radiator. MSI uses a conventional 27mm thick aluminium radiator with dense fin spacing optimised for high pressure fans. The radiator is coloured all black to match the underlying colour scheme. MSI uses what it calls evaporation proof tubing for the liquid cooler and basically that translates into rubber with a mesh over it. The tubes measure in at 400 millimeters long and have a high quality braided outer to maintain a sleek appearance. Flexibility of the tubing is a positive, though MSI's other design implementations severely limit the realistic flexibility of the cooler's installation and orientation possibilities. We see a bay copper cold plate in the standard Acetec form for this seventh generation cooler. The unit does come with thermal paste pre-applied, but we'd already used this prior to photography. There's no spare tube of thermal paste, which is disappointing. Sizing of the cold plate should be fine for even large high-end desktop CPUs as we've seen over the years with Acetec. Physically, the pump block unit is not all that big given that it's just a standard Acetec design. However, the unit is huge in practice thanks to the inclusion of a 60mm 4000 RPM water block fan positioned directly above the pump block unit and there's the 2.4 inch display mounted on top of that. The pump unit is PWM controlled and operates up to 2800 RPM. Its speed curve can be tuned and controlled within MSI's Windows software, which is really good. That software controlled 60mm water block fan is intended to provide incidental airflow to some of the nearby components. So it's not really going to help with your CPU cooling as such, but it might provide some airflow to the VRM of your motherboard, an M.2 SSD that's nearby. However, it's a relatively small 60mm blower and has significant airflow restrictions above from the screen and below from the pump block unit. So we'll have to wait and see how useful it actually is in our motherboard VRM testing segment. MSI's choice of fans are a trio of Meg Silent Gale P12, which are intended for noise efficient performance according to MSI. These hydrodynamic bearing 120mm blowers operate at up to 2000 RPM top speed. They use a 350mm long braided 4-pin PWM cable for connection and can operate under a 0 RPM mode. One odd point is that there's no RGB lighting on these fans, which really is odd given the already superfluous nature of having an LCD screen on your all-in-one liquid cooler. Very surprised by this decision from MSI. With regards to their noise efficient performance, it is good to see rubber dampers on each corner. That really should help isolate some of those vibrations. Control for the fans and the overall cooler operation is handled through the MSI Center Windows software. The predefined fan speed settings are helpful and the ability to set custom fan curves is useful. There is a limitation of 70% minimum radiator fan speed when the CPU temperature is above 80 degrees Celsius, though this is unlikely to be an issue for most users. While MSI Center is undeniably good and worked fine for our needs, it is very basic in comparison to the market leader that is Corsair IQ. That's particularly true with respect to synchronizing with other system hardware because that's a task that IQ handles very well. The sheer number of cables leaving the pump block unit will make tidy cable management quite a tricky task. You get USB 2.0, SATA power, 3-pin power and 3-way fan splitter cables. This is versus the far sleeker single or dual cable approach used by the Corsair and Thermaltake competing coolers. Thankfully all these cables are lengthy enough to be hidden behind the motherboard tray but you will have 5 cables worth of mess that you have to trail up your motherboard and VRM area and have to hide somehow. The 2.4 inch IPS display is fastened directly to the pump block unit and it has a very large magnetically attached cover sitting atop it. This cover is designed to allow ventilation for the 60mm fan whilst also hiding the connectivity cables and projecting the screen's image. It does, however, severely limit the angles of the tube in entering the block. Resolution of the screen is 320 by 240 with 16 bits of colour depth and 500 nits of brightness. 
500 nits of brightness was just about fine in our testing, but the 320 by 240 screen lacks some sharpness versus the 480 by 480 resolution competition from Corsair and Thermaltake. For the functionality that it offers, I was happy with the screen's performance. Seeing things like fan speeds, CPU temperature, liquid temperature, and frames per second are all useful and are clear on the screen. Plus the ability to use personalized images or local weather updates are also useful, depending on your preference. Control for the screen is handled through the MSI Center software, and it works fine. Interestingly, on the warranty and longevity front, MSI rates the fans and the pump as 50,000 hours expected life expectancy, which is pretty slim by modern PC cooling hardware standards. Worth quickly noting is that MSI offers support for all the modern Intel and AMD hardware, and there is a part on the website that says that AM5 support is baked into this cooler when it eventually comes, of course. Installation on our AMD test platform is just as easy as we would expect from an Acetec built cooler. You screw the posts into the default AM4 backplate before fixing the pump block unit and its pre-applied thermal paste into position. Once this is all fastened, the cables can be routed and the screen cover can be applied. The screen cover's design does mean that it should be mounted in the correct orientation to the tubing, but the images displayed on the screen can be rotated by 90 degree increments inside MSI's software. I think that's enough for a closer look. Let's get into the test hardware, the test procedures, and the results. Our test system is built around the Ryzen 9 5950X processor, and this runs at precision boost overdrive settings, as well as 4.45 gigahertz with 1.312 volts BIOS fed on our gigabyte motherboard. That gigabyte motherboard is delivering about 210 watts of package power and overclocked loading, and it's the B550 Aorus Master, which has an excellent VRM solution. Clean power comes from the Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply. We've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory. The graphics card is a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super in its zero decibel fan mode. We use a fractal design Meshify 2 chassis with three 140 millimeter fans. For testing, we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 multi-core, and we record the steady state temperatures towards the end of this test. The ambient temperature in our room is kept somewhere between 22 to 24, possibly up to 25 degrees Celsius. And where we veer outside of that 22 to 24 range, we will add in additional test runs just to ensure consistency of the data. As always, if you want more details, then check out our previous video reviews of CPU coolers like this one, and also make sure you check out the written web page on the Kikuru website. Let's jump into the results. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Running at 50 dBA in our test system, noise output from the MSI Meg Core Liquid S360 is about where we would expect for a high-end 360mm Acetec built liquid cooler. The notable Corsair and Thermaltake 360mm screen equipped competitors are both at similar noise levels despite MSI running slower 2000 RPM fans versus the tough Liquid Ultra 360s. But MSI does also have that 60mm water block fan running at 4000 RPM top speed, so 50 dBA total output is absolutely fine on balance. You also get reasonable fan speed curve control in MSI software, so that can tailor noise output better. Overclock temperature performance from MSI's cooler is strong in isolation. A delta temperature of 58 degrees Celsius is a good result and is comparable to some of the other 360mm coolers in our chart, albeit the more cost effective ones. However, MSI's performance versus its logical market positioning and cost competitors, the Corsair H150i Elite LCD and Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 360 is less flattering. Both of those competing coolers offer slightly better performance than MSI's Meg Core Liquid S360. And as our previous chart showed, both coolers also run at very similar noise levels. That's not a great result for MSI, so we'll have to see how the fans are able to maintain the performance versus the competition when locked to 40 dBA. We adjust each cooler's fan speeds until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. In order to get the unit run at 40 dBA, we have to restrict the radiator fans down to 70% duty cycle, which translates to around 1470 RPM operating speed. As MSI software only permits the fourth point on the radiator fan curve to go as low as a 70% fan speed for 80 degrees or above recorded temperature, we realistically had no room to further reduce the radiator fan speeds for our testing methodology. This was an issue because the noise output was still above our 40 dBA necessitated target level. As such, we were forced to also reduce the water block fan speed to hit our target noise output. 
This was reduced to 40% duty cycle, which recorded as around 2050 RPM, according to the MSI software. The pump was maintained at its 2800 RPM maximum speed output. Noise efficiency looks to be a strength for the MSI MEG Core Liquid S360, as indicated by the 40 dBA locked performance results. Here we see the cooler put in a delta of 61 degrees Celsius, which is only a 3 degrees Celsius reduction in performance versus the full fan speeds. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. It's critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperature are not as important for our PBO testing because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. PBO performance from the MSI MEG Core Liquid S360 is very positive. We see cooling performance that matches the Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 360 competitor and manages a slightly better CPU power dissipation value, albeit at marginally lower all-core clocks. And only the Corsair and Sapphire 360mm all-in-ones are better than MSI's by a very small, almost insignificant margin. 227 watts of package power handled is a very good result and shows that MSI's unit does have strong cooling abilities at particularly high thermal loads. VRM cooling performance is solid thanks to the inclusion of MSI's 4000 RPM 60mm water block fan. With that said, I did expect a bigger improvement versus some of the 360mm competitors, particularly when the other 60mm fan equipped Acetec built unit, Asus's ROG Ryogen 2 360, offers so much better VRM cooling. Either way, we don't have complaints with the incidental VRM cooling from MSI's unit. It's just that the noise penalty of the water block fan is probably not worth as much performance gain as we'd have liked. To summarize, all out noise balanced cooling performance from the MSI MEG Core Liquid S360 is good, it's strong. Typically, we saw cooling and package power performance only slightly behind that of Corsair's H150i Elite LCD and Thermaltake's Tough Liquid Ultra 360 LCD equipped all-in-ones. The noise output levels were the same too. The supplementary water block fan on MSI's all-in-one liquid cooler seems to be of little importance when balanced against its additional noise output. But with that said, it did have a small benefit on the VRM thermal performance in our test system, and depending on your test hardware, your motherboard, your M.2 SSD, it may provide a bigger benefit. Cooling control through the MSI Center software is generally good, albeit with some minor limitations. As usual though, Corsair really has set the standard when it comes to software with IQ, and it is difficult for MSI to compete with that fully-fledged, mature ecosystem. Of course, some of the cheaper 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers will outshine MSI's MEG Core Liquid S360 from a value-biased cooling performance perspective. But they don't offer the screen, a water block fan, or dedicated software control that some buyers may be looking for. So, there's that. Aesthetics of MSI's cooler are good, provided that you're happy with an absolutely humongous pump block unit that engulfs basically your entire CPU zone. That IPS screen works well though, and it's functionally easy to use through MSI software. I am, however, disappointed by the lack of RGB lighting for the included fans. Now, I know that this is going to be one that will have people saying, I hate RGB, and other people saying, I love RGB. But if you're spending £250 on an all-in-one liquid cooler that already has a superfluous 2.4-inch screen on it, I think including RGB lighting on the fans is pretty much a no-brainer. At this point, I think it should be included by default, even if somebody wants to turn the lighting off on the fans. I don't quite understand why you'd go so excessive with the screen, but then not have LEDs on there. I'm very surprised by that choice. But if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. Overall, I think MSI has done a reasonable job with the MEG Core Liquid S360 all-in-one liquid cooler. Noise efficient cooling performance is good, the screen works well, and the 60mm water block fan offers some flexibility, depending on your test system. There is stiff competition in this market, notably from Corsair's H150i Elite LCD, which is roughly the same price, but has some benefits. With that said, I think MSI does enough to make this cooler worthy of consideration. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching our video review of the MSI MEG Core Liquid S360 all-in-one liquid cooler. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you like screens on coolers? Is this a trend that you think is pretty cool? Excuse the pun there, that was completely unintended. Or are you just not interested? As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. really supports the YouTube channel. Uh, check out our Patreon. Check out our cool merch store. Please do go onto the Kicker Room main website. That supports us massively. Uh, Hit us up on social media, Twitter, Discord, the likes, and check out our next review, where I'll see you next time.